I would like you to help me welcome our final speaker. He's the president of Benchmark Mortgage. Last year, that company did over $4 billion in home loans. He's also done over a billion dollars in home loans uh, in personal production. And so I'd like you guys, if you don't already know, help me welcome Mr. Jim McMahon to the Mortgage Summit. How's it going, Jim? Hey, Nick. Doing all right, man. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, sounds great. Good. Well, I'm uh, kind of remote today, so I'm on my phone, but thank God for e-commerce. That'll be the biggest winner out of this whole uh, kind of just pandemic crisis and opportunity is the e-commerce side and solution to things. So I'm sure everybody's already figured that one out, but uh, thanks for having me, man. I'm just going to kind of talk at you for here a little bit. You can guide me on any questions, but I uh, appreciate our conversation the other day. And, you know, the thing I want to bring as a 34 year person and veteran in this industry and, and most of my career as an originator and top originator and working very hard at it, like you all are in your careers, you know, it, it really is all about just making a difference that lasts to me for our clients and our communities. And boy, rarely along uh, in your career does, does a time like this come, but they do come. And, uh, you know, someone asked me the other day, someone who'd been in the business about 10 years, Nick, uh, they asked me, gosh, have you ever seen anything like this before? I said, well, to be quite honest with you, this is my seventh crisis since I started in 1986. <laughs> like, really? What was that? Because there hadn't been anything in the last 10 or 12 years. And this is very different for sure. But uh, the advice I have today, you know, for you all listening, number one, thanks for investing time uh, and making a difference in yourselves, which makes a difference in your community and others and being teachable. Um, that's one of the key, key things that I always tried to be and be very coachable to learn and then go take that to the streets in my own way or with our, my own message. And so one of the first things I would tell you, uh, because our industry has for sure been shaken uh, very, very hard the last 30 days. It's not over yet um, with the, the things that are coming with forbearance and the reality of that. And, you know, you can read all the different articles and uh, what it would actually feel like if between two and four hundred billion dollars of Payments don't get made over the next six to nine months, depending on how long the economic side of this goes. The new normal, whatever that's going to look like when things start to reopen a little bit, as you all already can imagine, you know, restaurants, whatever, it's not going to be normal. Testing and all that stuff. So, you know, with that said, from a mortgage professional standpoint, the first thing I would challenge all of you is to really assess and have a perspective and, and answer this question for yourself. Can you really answer overall to clients, referral partners, builders, realtors, everybody, you know, the why behind the market side of this, what's happening in our industry, because I listen to a lot of people right now, and they have a really good reasoning and justification and description. I talked to some realtors the other day on a Zoom call like this, but honestly, when I listened to what they said or what, and what their loan officers were telling them, it was completely wrong. <laughs> it was an angle on what they thought was happening, um, but, it, but it was completely wrong. And so I would just make sure you're getting great source and resource. And of course, one of the best ways to do that is, is be a student, read, set aside time. I'm going to give you some tips on that today. But let's just walk through the why behind the market here and what's, ha what's happened really since the early part of March in our industry. As you know, obviously, 30% of our economy has shut, been shut down on purpose and by design, and that's never happened before. And so for that to happen so quickly, um, the liquidity side of the marketplace uh, was very, very much disrupted uh, in a ginormous way. And literally right now, you know, I don't know if y'all know this number, but this is a rough number, but I'm a numbers nut. Um, at, at last count in a healthy time, let's go back to February, um, the United States of America was about 34,000 lenders. Um, counting all the big banks, all the little banks, all the credit unions, all the savings and loans, all the brokers, all the what would be called a, a upper small to, to mid-tier mortgage bank at Benchmark. Uh, we did 16,000 transactions last year for about 4.1 billion, as, as Nick said. We're a full service lender. Many of y'all work for a full service lender where we can service and all that, which we're going to talk about. But the point is, you know, all those different lenders out there of 34,000, there's now thousands of those 34,000 um, that are not lending at all that have stopped completely, that can't lend uh, for different reasons. There's some big ones, you know, Flagstar Bank. Some of you all have known them. I've known who they are most of my career. They stopped lending for a while by the decision of their board a few weeks ago because they had so many jumbo loans. So there's just so many different parts to this train and this train wreck that's affecting you somehow. I would just challenge you to make sure that the why you are telling people is very accurate and has is backed up with real data. And that's where you really want to become a student right now. I use CNBC a lot. Uh, Diana Olick, uh, you know, the, um, the, the, the gal that does all the real estate stuff on there is fantastic. The articles they have, but you can do searches, share with each other. Y'all may do that now, Nick, in your platform. 
but as all these different things have rolled forward, forbearance and uh, the different things, but let's just pick one subject. For instance, jumbo lending. Um, you know, just what it was four weeks ago, tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, the, the head guy for, for um, uh, I'm just blank with names, Redwood, um, called us, you know, and said, hey, you know, with the Fed not backing and buying jumbo um, securities, we are illiquid as of today. That was a Tuesday afternoon in March, late March. And of course, after that, dozens more, you know, dropped out and stopped lending as well. They're struggling now to purchase the loans that they had committed to and already closed. Um, and we all saw the jumbo market go away. But did it really go away? No, about 70% of it did, as we knew it 45 days ago. And so, you know, one of the things you can do as a, as a resource to your best clients is just to educate them on what's going on right now in that space, for example. You know, it's all fallen back to the big banks, right? Um, and even Wells now has exited the correspondent channel. SunTrust just exited the correspondent channel. Most will because they're getting so bombarded with all the business coming to their doors at the front front door, and yet they can't securitize and sell anymore any jumbo securities, but they're all still very liquid as banks, right? And so now, as some of my good friends in that space have told me, look, it's a portfolio loan again. And so what have they all done? Look at Chase, look at Wells. You know, they raised the rates a half a point. They raised their credit scores to 700, and you can come to them. Now, again, some of us still have access to like Chase Wealth Private Management on a jumbo delegated basis. But again, it's, as our rep told us, it's 700 FICO, it's 2009 underwriting again. Um, and so what would my advice be to my best realtor today? I may be able to take that deal in, let's say if you're in my shop, but it's gonna be a longer process. It has to be squeaky clean. Um, but you may wanna tell that person too, look, uh, the Northern Trust, the, the, the smaller private banks, the mid-sized private banks, they're gonna be doing jumbo loans. They're gonna be doing three and five year, seven year uh, type products. Again, it's gonna be at their price. It's gonna maybe take a little longer, but that's where the market is right now. And so I would challenge each of you as pros to just make sure you've really done your homework and studied the why, W-H-Y, behind each part of the market. Now, let's go to the regular agency stuff. Um, okay, I own a mortgage company, as Nick just said. So, I mean, I get to see some amazing things to just spun my head the last 30 days. And I remember a few weeks ago when Chase, who, you know, uh, just in our case at Benchmark, was buying 30 to 50, 60, 70 million dollars a month from us in business last year. And we have an amazing relationship with them. And I'm sure many of your companies do too with, with these different uh, buyers. But the point is, their world changed as well. And now all of a sudden, if you're just selling on a best efforts basis to them in the mortgage business, which some of your companies are, um, you need to understand this as a loan officer, what that means. Because there were days a few weeks ago where your company might have put out a bid to sell, let's say, let's go to FHA, a Ginnie Mae pool of loans, and where there's cert, usually a certain normal static price within a few basis points, there were days a few weeks ago where, and still is now, where the price may be 50, 70, 80 basis points off what the norm is. Well, that's your company's whole profit margin. Um, and then, you know, it even got to a point where, of course, when the, the uh, credit standards got changed to 680 and 700 now with some of these folks, you know, if, if your company was trying to sell a 660 loan that they closed a week before and hadn't got it sold yet or purchased, well, to get that sold, it was going to cost four to eight points. And so it's just nuts on the backside of the industry right now in the marketplace. And uh, it, it's not normal. I'm just going to say it that way. Nothing is normal right now. We're finding a new normal and you need to understand that and be the best advice based professional you've ever been right now and helping your clients understand the why behind that. Now, lenders who can service and have got cash, you know, that's going to be where the strength is in the mortgage banking world right now. Um, but if you all know, even Quicken Loans, the largest lender in America, uh, which is mostly refis right now, you know, went out and had to raise a billion dollars and they stopped a month ago locking um, uh, refinances until they're approved and with an appraisal. Well, that's because again of capacity. And that's another storyline I want to make sure you're clear on. If you're taking notes, here's a big one. Um, the capacity issue alone in our industry is a separate pillar that needs to be talked about. I mean, imagine these stats, folks. On any given day in our country, um, you and I have helped create somewhere between 12 and $14 trillion of residential loans that are on the books. That's your loan, my loan, on our houses that we're making payments, all the clients you've done in your career. 12 to 14 trillion is the, the rough number of total loans outstanding, right? Okay, so at last check, um, and well, let me say one more preface. Last year in 2019, 
um, was a record year in the mortgage industry. Our industry did $2.1 trillion in loans last year. I know our company had our best year ever. Many of you had your best year ever. It was a great year, uh, great economy, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, right now in this country, the numbers of people that are in line just to refinance, and this was about three weeks ago, I, I read a stat, it was almost $4 trillion in loans. So one third of every mortgage in America is trying to get refinanced. A lot of the big banks you may know are posting, you know, 180 day turn times uh, for refinance. Saw some of the big, you know, VA lenders posting that same thing recently that advertise all the time. Uh, all the big banks have stopped completely on doing the mailers and the send outs advertising for refinances because it's a capacity issue. Um, there are more loans than can get done right now with companies that have money and can, can function. Um, for you, if you can manage that and understand it, it's amazing. In fact, I've just been watching the last guest there talk about setting work hours, you know, in the middle of the night. I mean, work from 1 a.m. to 5. I mean, okay, that's cool. But also understand you better manage your message and manage the, the reality of what your capacity is meaning what yours is as a human being, but also what your company's is. And if you don't know, I would really challenge you to ask and find out. I had a loan officer call me the other day, you know, that heard about our stats and that we're still turning loans in 24 and 48 hours and blah, 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 and record months and our people are motivated and killing it. But still, we have, we have a certain capacity. I told all our people on a call the other day with our company. I mean, we unfortunately cannot do every loan in America. Wish we could. Um, you know, but we're, we're at a pretty good capacity. We've got a system for it. We're doing record months, but you need to know where your company stands on that and what the real story is. Because this loan officer I was talking to said, well, my company has moved all of our closings forward by 45 days or, or half of our closings and then they're doing it. And I try to explain to them nicely that, you know, they were probably either out of cash or tight on cash or, you know, their, their warehouse lines had, had been maximized. It's a capacity issue. So there's, there's capacity issue and then there's reality of liquidity issue which our industry is facing. Because remember, we're, we're just 30 days into this reality. In other words, April 1st was the first payment date that a whole bunch of people didn't make their payments on, on a home. Um, and if you're not educated on forbearance, I'm gonna weave that topic in here too. Get articles, I mean, build folders every day right now and be searching and getting good, good articles on what's going on in the industry. Um, and the forbearance thing is, is a good thing for the, a person who's been really affected by it. And everybody can, can, uh, is technically qualified, but be clear with your customers right now. You know, or somebody who, because there's such mixed messages is my point. Somebody who thinks, oh, because of the COVID-19 you know, coronavirus, I get to have a payment holiday. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I know you all know that. But if someone does fall into that message or they're on some group chat and they don't make their payment for three months, they need to get face reality, they're going to have to pay back four payments, right? In other words, if they didn't lose their job because of coronavirus and do the paperwork and fill it out and all that stuff. And then someone who, who literally was legit and qualified, it, it's going to be like an escrow account. And you all, again, may already know this, but get articles where you can show your clients, um, use third party information right now on everything. There's so many good articles out there. I'm pulling down seven or eight a day and just putting them out there for our company. Um, and through our network, because that's the way to communicate your message and confirm it. Um, one of the best in the industry at this, if you don't know who Steve Harney is uh, with KCM Keeping Current Matters, he's amazing. And Nick knows, knows who he is. We used to do a lot of work with him. Um, he's got, you know, 25,000, 26,000 realtor. He's in the realtor space, but and he and I did a, a, a talk the other day for a bunch of his realtors. And everybody wants great information right now, but they need real information. And Harney uses third party uh, confirmation information better than anybody I've ever seen. And that's what I would challenge you all to do right now is really, really be on your game, gather great information. Yes, your opinion matters and you need to develop a very strong, clear one based on truth and the why, as I said, but also base your opinion on facts. In other words, get the facts every day as things continue to change in our very dynamic marketplace right now. Um, the market's going to continue uh, because the government has completely you know, stood behind of course, agency loans, even, even with the new credit standards, which we need to be really clear on with people because those are for real, man. Um, one thing I was going to say again about Chase, just using them, you know, two weeks ago when I got their new grid, uh, I was looking at it with our head of secondary. And again, thank God we can service loans, but um, their grid had come out after the 680 thing and then they moved to 700 the following Monday. And yeah, you can still do a 660 loan with them, but it had eight points attached to it. And if you went to 640, it had 18 points. And if you went to a 620, it had 22 points. In other words, they were saying, we don't want any of these. 
Um, and so, you know, if your company is able to service, of course, they can price for risk. And uh, right now, servicing values, by the way, have a, a zero or negative value, but, you know, a loan underwritten well and with a company that can service um, that'll have value someday. So it's a very mixed scrambled egg world out there right now in the mortgage banking world. But that's where pros get paid the most. That's where real pros get to really make a market in bringing truth and reality to a situation. Um, and the good news is, again, 70% of the economy is still uh, working and functioning, maybe not normally by any means. We're all sitting here talking. I'm talking from my lake house bedroom <laughs> on a Zoom call with a bunch of y'all that, you know, I don't think we would have been talking today had, had this not happened. So, um, you know, it's fascinating times. And one of my biggest themes is it's not what happens because crazy stuff is going to happen in this business in this life, but it's what you do about what happens that makes all the difference. And I think that's the greatest opportunity right now. We're going to see many of you and, and many people in this industry and companies uh, that will come out and really do great things for their communities and for others and do that through, you know, uh, making the real estate market a better place, helping people save money on refinances right now is going to be a huge part of kickstarting this economy again over the upcoming weeks and months as we go forward. But again, I can't challenge you enough to understand the why behind the current situation. And again, that starts with you, starts with your own company, starts with your industry. Um, look, let's talk about the Fed for a minute. Uh, there was a big uh, part of the story a few weeks ago. It settled down now. But when Steve Mnuchin, about a month ago, it was, it was mid-March, you know, got on CNBC, I was I leave the stream most of the day, and he, he said, you know, basically, um, unlike the 2008 crisis, the Fed is going to step in and buy MBS and other deal, even high-yield corporate debt unlimited. And when he said unlimited, I thought, I don't think that's good. You know, I'm pretty sophisticated, I think, and been doing this for a very long time, and we taught the economic side of this industry for a long, long time and rates and yields and why rates move and all that stuff. And when he said that, I was like, whoa, what's that going to mean? Well, a week later, if you all remember, we had mortgage backs move over 200 basis points in both directions a couple times in the same day. And when the Fed started buying uh, for a 10 day period there, they bought $185 billion in mortgage backed securities. Um, which in, in those 10 days, that was more than in any four week period by a little more than two and a half times during the 2008, 2009 great recession. And so me and a bunch of others an MBA and I know Barry Beep got his word in through his CNBC buddies. And, uh, but man, I was on the phone with two billionaires that weekend and my attorney general of our state and a U.S. congressman. And the word got to the Fed finally that um, they were overbuying and it was crushing mortgage bankers with the margin call problem. And that was a big issue. And you should know about that as a senior loan officer, what that did to the industry. It settled down now. You know, the Fed was had the green light to buy 40 billion a day uh, back four weeks ago. This week, if you go you know, on newyorkfed.gov, uh, you can see the schedule. Uh, they're only uh, scheduled to buy up to 10 billion a day and they're not even doing that. Some days they're only buying two and a half billion, three billion. So they're letting the free market come back and dictate price uh, and direction. Um, but it's, it's been a mess for the last 30 days in our industry on the back side of the industry, which has affected price, rates, uh, speed, everything. And then the capacity issue obviously is a big, big deal too. So I told Nick, I was just going to talk at you for 20 or 30 minutes and just try to give you as much as I could from an expertise standpoint. Um, you know, obviously this is an elite group. Uh, I think that's really cool. You also know, again be proud that you're making the time to not just do business, but you care about how you do business and why you do business a certain way. Um, and again, I, I think the biggest challenge is to be, make a better you, build a better you, and you'll, you'll build a better industry right now and a better out, uh, outcome for your, your clients. And uh, that's again, guiding them on truth, how to get qualified, how not to hurry it, educate your realtors and your builders. Um, there's going to be a huge washout probably in the real estate community from this already thousands and thousands and thousands from what I've read. Um, even, uh, Gary Keller, uh, you know, Keller Williams said this the other day that, you know, this would be, this would be the biggest washout of realtors getting out of the business, uh, in the history of the industry. Just people don't want to pay the monthly fee or the quarterly fee or whatever to deal with this much hassle. But the good news of that again is there'll be, you know, hopefully more real pros left standing and, uh, you know, we'll be able to serve them well. Uh, with a great message and great truth and execution. But um, thoughts, Nick, on that or questions you want me to talk more on? Yeah, I mean, I'll wait and see if, uh, if, people have, if people have questions. Feel free to drop your questions in the comments if you have something specific you want to say. You know, one of the things that the other day when we talked, you talked about 
you know, are you, are you on solid grounds, you know? Um, and I think there's different things. What, what did you mean by that? You know, maybe professionally or personally, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Like, let's say, um, I mean, if you know what a mini correspondent lender is, you know, and some of you may, may work for one, nothing wrong with it. A lot of friends that are in that space, but jump back to March 1st and, and, and me and Nick own Jim and Nick mortgage. Okay. JNN mortgage Inc. And we set up with Wells Fargo. They're one of many banks that have a mini correspondent program. And we both put up a quarter of a million bucks, $300,000 of our savings over the years. And we, we got an eight or $10 million line of credit with Wells Fargo through their mini correspondent program. And we own chain and mortgage. Okay. So all of a sudden here comes the, the mini crash there by mid March. And we've got all our loans, you know, in the pipe with them and they're letting us know that, Hey, um, our guidelines have changed and you guys are going to put up more cash to even keep this thing open. And we're like, well, wait a minute, all our cash is in the loans we got with you right now. We need to close those first. And you're adding on two weeks to your turn times. And they're like, well, sorry, then you can't lend. Uh, we can't give you any more line. You can't put any more loans through until you close the ones you got or put up a half million dollars more. I mean, that's just one angle, Nick, of one part of the story of a thousand other stories within the industry. And so, boom, there was several thousand lenders across the country that couldn't lend anymore that were in that space, you know, a few weeks ago. And now maybe they've gotten back or put up more cash, but some didn't, right? Um, there are just so many unstable, shaky ground situations that are out there with different type lenders, depending on cash, depending on margin calls, depending on warehouse capacity. You know, this is a very entrepreneurial industry. And so when you're going, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, and in, in almost into a 12th year of an up cycle, which is the longest I've ever seen in my 34 year career of almost perfection. I mean, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, from 2010 through February of this year, it was about the most perfect uh, 10, 11 year run you could have ever dreamed of um, as hard as this industry is. And now we just got shaken back to a much more normal reality of what stability looks like. And so you need to ask those questions and understand you'll learn a lot about your company through this um, and they'll learn a lot. I mean, I'm sure they're all figured, if you're still standing, they've figured it out in the last few weeks, what they're gonna have to do uh, if they've got cash or they gotta get more infusion or if they're gonna do less loans or you know, you're gonna see all different answers. But um, it's definitely for you all that are survivors of this and are gonna thrive in this. Here's my challenge, Nick. And I think what I would really tell to a small group of pros like this, learn to really take an ownership mentality. If you are the owner of your company, maybe you're not right now, but you might be someday, um, you know, do you understand really what's going on? Are you getting the questions answered? Um, what are you learning from this? You know, be multidimensional in your reality of this industry. Don't just be one dimensional. I do loans. I'm bringing in business. Take care of me. You know, big brother company. That's a naive place to be. Um, you should really ask questions and understand the why. Um, and it'll help you really understand even more the different pillars that are in our business, Nick, as far as, you know, the true banks and their role, the mid-sized banks, the regional banks, the brokers, you know, the broker, I mean, uh, community had died in 2008, 2009, and then came back live, you know, kind of in 11 and 12, and then was just exploding over the last three years, which is typical of the top of a cycle. Um, and now, you know, it's not going to go away again, but those channels have certainly slowed down a lot and turn times turned into 10 and 11 and 12 days with a lot of sources. Um, and so you just learn a lot right now in a time like this and don't let this opportunity, Nick, I'm going to call it an opportunity. Don't let the opportunity of this moment in a cycle like this, uh, you know, not be, don't let it be wasted on learning and asking why on every single piece of the things that affect you so that you can be a better professional and a more knowledgeable professional going forward. Wow. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Cause I think, you know, sometimes people are just on one aspect of what they do for the loans. They're not thinking of, you know, all these other questions. If somebody's, if somebody's at a location or whatever company that they're aligned with and they, there was maybe a couple of questions that they go ask people to know, are they on solid ground? Are there any questions that you would be, you'd recommend somebody go ask their company? Well, so I, my two famous ones, when I coach loan officers, you know, I always say, um, you know, just first off, if you want to get out of the naive stage and learn more from an ownership mentality yourself, because you all own your own business, right? From the standpoint of, if you're a $20 million producer, you, you are running a $20 million sales company, right? With a company within a company, and you need to think that way. But one of the first questions I always say is, 
um, you know, you should just be able to answer this one yourself. If you started to think like an owner in my world, who can change the deal? Just start there. Who can change the deal? If you work for a big bank, it's a board of directors you're never going to meet, even a mid-sized bank or a small bank. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just still, that's answering the question, who can really change my deal? A mid-sized mortgage bank like us, me and two other owners, we 100% own it. We have no outside, you know, stockholders, debt holders, um, or anything else. So we can change the deal. We take huge influence from our top three executives, our CEO, our COO, et cetera. So if you're in a company like ours, Okay, there's the guys or gals that can change the deal. So, you know, be able to answer that question in your world. Who truly can change my deal? But then the second bigger question, Nick, you ready? Drum roll. Hey, what is the freaking deal? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's who can change it, but then what is the deal? Hey, are we for sale? Are we debt laden? Are we debt free? Uh, are we trying to grow crazily? Are we focused on purchases only? Are we a backside, you know, call center refi shop? And all those are okay. It's just the point is, do you know? Um, do you know the answers to those two questions? Who can change the deal? What is the freaking deal? And then once you're armed with that, um, you know, you can then ask more questions, right? You can start to understand where the company's going. And, and if you can't get answers, sometimes that's a little scary too. But um, if you can, that's a good thing because transparency is a very attractive truth in ownership and leadership um, and, and understanding, you know, where your, your, your company's going. Does that help? Yeah, for sure. And I saw a couple of people saying, how do you stay updated on the changes going on in the industry? Are there, if for you, it's just a matter of like, you just have different resources, different websites, different people that you're going to check in on every, every day. Yeah, I mean, I think like right now, it's funny, you know, Housing Wire, right? I mean, so, you know, I remember when it came out, they called on me because I used to be doing all my speaking and training back in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, and, and you and I met in the 2000s. But, um, you know, I would resubscribe the other day to housingwire.com. I mean, I'm starting to, I want more flow, right? Crispin Report, you know, uh, Rob Crispin, man, is a guru, you know, uh, we get his thing, my COO sends it to me every morning, um, you know, Mortgage Market Guide. Uh, you know, Barry Habib, I mean, you know, MBS Highway, I mean, have resources, you know, be a student every day of this crazy game. I promise you there's so much more you don't know that you should know and that you'll become a better resource if you're just committing an hour to an hour and a half every morning or splitting it up every morning, every evening, and just reading with discernment. In other words, if you don't understand forbearance right now, go understand. You'll find a thousand good articles. Um, again, CNBC is loaded under the real estate section. Uh, you know, I'm a member of the CNBC uh, Plus, which is just their thing where you can go research all the speakers that day on the show and search them and, and listen to, like over the years, I've found my favorite economist or whatever. I want to hear their thoughts on things um, or if they have a housing person talk. Uh, but you really want to understand right now the Fed's role uh, behind the mortgage space. Um, so go seek resources and then read and un seek to understand so you can understand the questions and the why behind all that. Awesome. And, and last question, Josh was asking, in your opinion, what, what's the best type of setup to be in for the next few years? You know, he, he lists off a few different ones, right? Mini correspondent, net branch, broker, et cetera. What's, what's, your, what's your thoughts on that? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. You better be with somebody who's got some cash. Um, you know, we just made a decision to, to take on uh, over the next six to months to eight months, maybe not over a year, and we're going to add another billion dollars in servicing. And again, we're, you know, this year we'll do five, five and a half billion, maybe six, but um, we've got the cash to support that, you know, and we made that decision as owners. We've been really smart. Um, so, you know, being able to control that choice means I can, we can do a, you know, six, 65 loan that really works for us. Not a guy who made a late payment in December of 19, but had, credit, you know, it was from several years back or whatever, you know, where someone that can make that decision is a good place to be. Um, you know, you need to know the deal. And those, this is a great question, Josh, because um, again, nothing wrong with the broker shop. Nothing, but you look at the reality of today of what can happen. You know, here's another way to say it, Nick. This is a great one to write down. You want to really seek wisdom? Answer this one. What are the unintended consequences I could run into if all hell breaks loose in my current situation. Now you probably got that question answer over the last four weeks um, in your current situation, but you need to make sure you're getting the truth of your current situation um, because it's tough. I mean, a lot of owners have gone through tough times or they're trying to make hard decisions right now. Um, you know, if someone's saying, oh, we're merging with somebody else or, or we're being bought out, 
they're broke because you're not going to do that in this market. Um, that'd be stupid. But uh, so I think you, you've got to seek somewhere that has the certainty to service loans, in my opinion. That's where I would want to be as a top originator and can make those decisions, but still have flexibility, still has entrepreneurism, you know, still has the ability to, to make good decisions and to be realistic with the current credit situation that we're in, because we're going to have to live with the new, new credit situation for, for sure for months to come, if not a year or so. This is going to take a while to to get this economy back. I mean, let me make clear to you what you're about to see, folks. You know, when you've got 22 million people that have signed up for unemployment claims in four weeks, and there's more coming, I mean, you're gonna see by that first week of May, you know, a 15 to 18% unemployment rate, for sure, no less than 12. Um, and then by the time you get to June, I mean, that thing could be 18 to 25. Um, and and that's, that's unbelievable, right? Because even as the economy gets reopened, everybody's going to relook at everything. So, you know, a company that was going to take down 100,000 square feet in office space, they're going to go, you know what, we probably could make this work with 55,000. And we probably could do, you know, you're going you're gonna to have to climb or crawl back in uh, with how hard we're hit. And then look at the oil and gas space. I mean, had this economy not gotten hit with coronavirus and the, you know, the Russian uh, Saudi deal, which again, I've been around long enough, the same thing happened in the, in the 90s um, between those two or they tried to just crush the, the U.S. energy, um, you know, space. And thank God, you know, for what we've done these past few years and getting the pipeline from Canada and getting energy independent. But still, look what happened today with uh, West Texas WTI crude. I mean, it, it, it's all-time history. I mean, it went negative. Now, just for the monthly contract of May, I mean, June's the real price. It's at 22 or 21, I think, at the close. But it's just crazy what's happening in this economy right now. And that's the other part that hopefully, Nick, the discipline of reading and learning and being a student of the business – You'll continue that from the economic side of the business and what happens. Good news is we're not going to have any inflation for a while. Rates are going to be low for a while. Um, you know, right now, real rates are so low, it's incredible. All of us in the industry have had to put higher margins on what real rates are because of the risk factor right now. But um, rates are going to be down for a while. And uh, this economy will creep back. Uh, you know, many JP Morgan came out the other day and said the second quarter will be uh, a negative 24% GDP. I mean, think about that. It's unbelievable. Um, third quarter might be even to negative four, but then they're saying fourth quarter up 19%. So, and I believe that. I think we could have a U-shaped recovery, but it's still going to be very challenging from a market standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Even uh, David Childers, he was on earlier today with with Steve Harney, you know, um, and, and that's what he was kind of indicating a two year, he thought it was going to be around a two year, uh, you know, recovery based on what, what, yeah. what their predictions are. I told him that Friday. <laughs> awesome. You know how close David and I are. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, he's great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Let me see. Bob X. Okay, yeah, that's not important. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jim. Really appreciate you closing us out for day one. That was awesome. Any uh, final thoughts you want to leave us with? Well, number one, thanks for doing this. I'm just so proud of all of you um, for being on this. I, I, I'll, I'll leave you with this. And, and this is one of the greatest things that can come from my theme of it's not what happens, it's what you do about what happens. When you can measure your time where you're actually at a place where you're putting 20% of your time into growing you personally and working on your business, and then 80% of your time being in your business, you're at pro level. And, you know, for you all to do what you're doing right now, this is called on time. You're not taking calls. You're not working on a loan at this moment. You're working on you. You're working on your knowledge. And that's one of the greatest things that I always love to see in, in people that I've coached and trained over the years and tried to help. And because I had people help me do that to build the, the uh, mortgage practice that I was very fortunate to create. And, and that's the secret. So good for you all to do this, spend time, use some time after this too, to discern, go through your notes, you know, what one, two, three, four nuggets you're going to take from this and go make a difference for you and for others that last and really be a student and, and you'll take your business to a level you never imagined. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jim. Really appreciate you for being here. Thanks, All right, y'all. we'll talk to you around. See it. Bye. What's up, everybody? Gian Bavaro with Bavaro team of Clear to Close Home Loans here in South Florida. Hope you're doing awesome today. So you might be wondering, Gian, why do you look so darn tired? Well, let me tell you something. Since I joined Legion of Loan Officers, my business has been exploding. I have been drowning in home loans. Right now, uh, I'm projected to have a $3 million month. So December, we hit 2.1. January, we broke, just broke two, just a little over two. 
February we hit uh, 2.1 again, and now for February we're expect uh, so sorry for March we're expecting to hit uh, 3.1. April it's going to be huge. So Nick, I just want to say thank you for helping me. Not only did I add the 10 realtor partners you said I would add, but I added 25 realtor partners since last year July when I signed up. So less than a year, 25 realtor partners, been super busy. Nick Carpenter, just want to say thank you, uh, give you the shout out testimonial. And uh, man, thank you again for everything. This course was everything you said it would be and more. So Nick, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, man. You've made me a millionaire. <laughs> Have a good night.